As of the time of this recording, IT Chapter 2 is officially out, which means Pennywise the Clown is back and traumatizing the minds of the young and old once again. So, saying that, to honor the release of this horror, we're back with a part two of our list Top 5 Scariest Monsters Created by Stephen King. Before we begin, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. Let's jump in. Coming in at 5, Cujo from Cujo. Published back in 1981, Cujo is a psychological horror about rabid Saint Bernard. Yeah, it's that simple. Dogs are supposed to be man's best friend, however, this pooch is no one's friend. Now, this number is all dependent on how you view the source material. The original text at face value is literally about the poor dog Cujo who goes crazy on account of rabies. Yeah, no fun at all. However, if you choose to side with the supernatural elements of the text, things change a little. Well, a lot. And you may be fearing the ghost of killer Frank Dodd has possessed Cujo the dog. However, no matter how you spin it, Cujo is still terrifying because, to put it simply, King took something so innocent, something so full of love, and made it sinister and a killing machine, with Cujo wanting nothing more than to rip apart the mother and son trapped inside their car. It's simple, but that's what makes it truly terrifying, perhaps because so many of us have dogs or want dogs. The idea that the instinct to kill could take over our lovable furry friends is completely and utterly terrifying. Coming in at number four, Gage Creed Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Published back in 1983, Pet Cemetery follows Lewis Creed, a doctor from Chicago, who relocates with his family to a house near the small town of Ludlow, Maine, with his wife Rachel, their two young children, Eileen and Gage, and Ellie's cat Winston Church. Louis quickly learns of the local cemetery where the children of the town bury their deceased animals. However, it isn't as wholesome as you would believe. The pets that are buried come back to life. And our characters learn this when Winston is hit by a truck and returns not long after being buried, however, he doesn't return the same. Nothing ever does. However, it isn't so much the supernatural elements of Pet Cemetery that we're going to be focusing on here. No, it's the character of Gage Creed, the youngest child and the scariest. Gage is one of the primary antagonists from the book and the film of the same name, though starting out innocent and sweet, things take a turn when he is run over by a truck at Thanksgiving. However, Gage's death was actually caused by the magic of the Pet Cemetery, a place where Gage is ultimately ultimately buried and in turn returns back to life. No longer a sweet and innocent child, but now a zombie. A zombie that seeks to kill his family and his neighbours. There is something truly evil inside this tiny body of Gage, and it has a brutal lust for blood, even wielding a scalpel and wreaking havoc across his small town. Honestly, Gage still haunts my dreams. In at number 3, The Overlook Hotel from The Shining. Now, arguably the main antagonist in the 1980 horror movie The Shining is The Overlook Hotel, the haunting, mysterious and isolated hotel located deep in the Colorado mountains. It's the location of this psychological horror that houses Jack Torrance and his family over a long winter in hopes of curing his writer's block. All is well at first. Jack, his wife Wendy and their young son Danny settle in, that is, before Danny becomes plagued by psychic premonitions that gradually become more disturbing over the course of the movie. However, during this time, Jack begins to discover the hotel's dark and disturbing secrets, and begins to unravel into a homicidal maniac hell-bent on terrorizing his family. Now, in the world of Stephen King, hotels are a naturally creepy place, specifically in the short story 1408, which takes place in the Dolphin Hotel. However, the Overlook Hotel best exemplifies the true horror of what a hotel is capable of. The Overlook is festering with ghosts, and these ghosts are not kind, not kind at all. They're incredibly hostile and seek to lure you deeper into the hotel and into their grasps. They are demonic spirits trapped in eternal misery, forced to forever relive their gruesome ends, and in turn bringing harm to anyone who gets in their way. The Shining is scary, but the film would be absolutely nothing without the hotel. 
place that no matter what makes you feel a constant unease and discomfort. A place that houses the undead who have nothing but evil intentions. In at two, Henry Bowers from It. Bowers. Mike. 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 Published back in 1986, it is Stephen King's 22nd book and his 17th novel with the story following the experience of seven children as they are terrorised by an evil entity that exploits the fears and phobias of its victims to disguise itself while hunting its prey, Pennywise the Clown. However, this isn't the monster we're discussing today, no, it's Henry Bowers. Henry is the psychopathic school and neighbourhood bully and the secondary antagonist in the novel It, the miniseries, the 2017 film adaptation and the 2019 sequel. Bowers is everywhere. He is also the leader of the Bowers gang, a gang of preteen bullies who bully and rival the losers club. Now Henry's childhood is somewhat tragic and may answer the question as to why he is the way he is. Raised in a poor, violent environment by his mentally ill, racist and alcoholic father, Henry rapidly developed into a hateful boy who would often verbally and physically attack anyone around him. Now Henry's erosion to insanity began prior to the summer of 1958, during which time he torments the losers with acts of violence such as carving his name onto Ben Hamscombe's belly, killing Mike Hanlon's dog with raw meat laced with insect poisoning, breaking Eddie's arm and whitewashing Stan face in the snow until it bleeds. Yeah, Henry Bowers is truly disturbed. Henry eventually comes to possess a switchblade which he uses to kill his crazy abusive father. However, all of his disturbing behaviours come to a head when he chases the losers down through the sewers under Derry, where he encounters Pennywise who takes the form of Frankenstein's monster and kills Henry's friend Vic and Belch. Two murders that Henry would later be charged for before being committed to the Juniper Hill Asylum for Life, up until he escapes in 1985. Henry is a character that terrifies me more than Pennywise itself, simply because he has no limits. He will hurt anything and anyone for no reason. He does it simply because he can. Even in the wake of a shape-shifting entity, his violence never ceases. And finally coming in at number one, Kurt Barlow from Salem's Lot. <laughs> Published in 1975 before being made into a TV movie released in 1979, Salem's Lot is a horror novel by Stephen King and involves a writer named Ben Mears who returns to the town of Jerusalem's Lot in Maine, where he lived from the age of 5 through 9, only to discover that the residents are becoming vampires. Now, Kurt Barlow is the main antagonist in this disturbing story, and is not just a vampire, but a master vampire who terrorises this small main town. This is King's only foray into the world of vampires, the classic ones at least, and Barlow was King's way of getting the entire mythos right the first time, and he truly did it. Not only is it King's second novel and his first of many centering on preternatural creatures, but Salem's Lot was the first small town novel, a setting that King would return to many times. Times. Now, Barlow arrives in Maine after he is shipped in a box by his human assistant, and the two take residence in the mansion, a mansion that is considered to be haunted by almost everyone in the town. Now, Stephen King kept this novel simple, well, at least simple in its setup. It's essentially a modern take on Dracula and weaves that classic tale into his small town setting. And in the process, he created one of the most terrifying and disturbing monsters in horror history, Kurt Barlow. Now, his age is unknown, but before the event, of the novel, it is suggested that Barlow's original name or alias was Breiken, and that he was an Austrian nobleman who has spent centuries satisfying his appetites for humans. Barlow is arguably more of a catalyst, using residents as pawns to tighten his grip on the town, with his very presence invoking a sense of dread. A quote from the novel reads that above all else, they did not look out their windows, no matter what noises or dreadful possibilities, no matter how awful the unknown, there was an even worse thing to look the gorgon in the face. Yep, Kurt Barlow is not to be messed with. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any scary Stephen King monsters that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below, perhaps we can do a part three. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos, top five scary North American urban legends. DC Carter said, I drive on Riverdale Road almost daily. It's really creepy at night especially. Honestly, DC Carter, I would move if I were you. 
Just saying. Edward Valencia said, I hate Turnbull Canyon. I lived in Hacienda Heights when I was younger. While living there, my house was close to that canyon. Just a few years before we moved, I had an encounter with a demon in my room there. What the actual f Edward. I need more information ASAP. That's absolutely terrifying. James Delaney said, What TV series are you watching right now, Lucy? Any recommendations? Ooh, I am watching a bunch. I just finished season two of The Sinner, which was very good. I highly recommend. I also recently watched The Terror and Euphoria, the latter being one of the greatest shows of all time. Zendaya is amazing. Jennifer K. Luckett said, Would you please tell us more about Riverdale Road in Colorado? I would love to, hopefully in an upcoming video. No promises. But I want to. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary vid. And until next time, see you later.